Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Tanner, head of operations here at the Flex Network, and this is Flex Talk episode five. Today, we're going to be talking about Black Ops 2. Um, I have two guests with me today. Uh, Daniel, Flex Games channel manager. Say hi, Daniel. Hi, guys. And Rapture City, Flex Games director. Afternoon, everybody. So, uh, firstly, um, Black Ops 2 was announced on May 1st, uh, Tuesday. And they kind of took a big risk. They jumped into a totally different time zone. This is totally new for Call of Duty. What do you guys think about it? I honestly think that it kind of needs it. I think since Modern Warfare 2, the Call of Duty games have been kind of stale. They've been releasing the same content every year. Mm -hmm. And I think yeah. they needed to, needed to take some form of big risk just to keep the, one the audience entertained. Because if, if they just released another one like Black Ops... It would have just been like the same thing that you'd want, and but since it's futuristic and since they're doing something completely new, uh, I'm honestly looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, they need to make that big change, don't they? Yeah. Otherwise, no one was going to stay with it after Modern Warfare 3, the absolute disaster it was. Yeah. Even though I still play it, it is uh, it's not one of Infinity Ward's finest moments. Let's just say that. No, and I mean I enjoy the game, and but I, but I I know that Call of Duty is heading down this road. It's it's kind of like doing U turns constantly down a straight road, and just doing the same thing over and over again. And some could say that such a change is so drastic that maybe you know it, it's not going to feel like Call of Duty anymore. But think about how this kind of time change is just like what COD Four was. COD 4 was amazingly successful, and it was the first time that Call of Duty had jumped into a completely new yeah, time zone. True. Yeah, it, it went from the Call of Duty on PC to Call of Duty 2, and then you had the PS2 ones like Finest Hour and Big Red 1, and then it, they, I think they kind of clicked on that they needed some sort of change, otherwise they'd be getting into the kind of stalemate that they're in at the moment. Right. Um, yeah. I'm so looking forward to it, though. Yeah. yeah it, it, the it zombies look amazing. Yeah, uh, eight yeah, player it, zombies. I heard. Yeah, eight player zombies. I've also heard that they're having like uh, a part aside from the uh, the round based normal uh, modes. They're doing a like a mission based uh, zombies mode. So you got missions within the actual zombies. Right. I heard so, there was going to be more than just like the horde game mode. Yeah. It was going to be. Um, there were going to be more modes. I also heard that they're they're moving it into the multiplayer game engine. They which, actually are. I've right. That as well. Which means, to me, ranking up, challenges, and yeah. maybe even your own like zombie title. I mean, this could be like a game within a game, you know? Well, the thing is, is that um, the zombies beforehand, they've never been based on a multiplayer server. It's always gone off whoever's got the best connection. That's right. why the servers always used to crash, and on Black Ops, you get kicked every single two seconds. Right. But, um, since it's on the multiplayer server now, it lets them introduce new uh multiplayer modes to it uh, which mm -hmm. also lets them use the uh multiplayer maps which i've already also heard so they'll be doing a similar thing to what spec ops did yeah yeah i heard i heard bigger maps as well yeah i've heard a lot bigger maps which uh, i'm not sure they're gonna put vehicles in now vehicles on zombies would be either amazing or a giant mess and i think yeah, then... i think if they did it the right way it would be a really good strategic um, I mean, reward. I mean, think about it like if you could get one of those like uh, quad peds, those walking like tank things. Oh, yeah, yeah. If it yeah. was like a certain, yeah, that'd be good if it was like, if it was like some kind of, um, like in Mono for Three Survival, you know, there are those little uh, like achievements every round. You know, you can get like, um, what is it called? Like, uh, yeah, challenge bonuses, like headshot. They're, they're little bonuses in the bo bottom left. And like there's 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 ones yeah. for getting like quad kills and and like and multiple kills in a row and kill streaks. If there was something to that extent in zombies, and you were rewarded by choosing some kind of equipment, then I think it would be I think it would work very well. Yeah, if it, if you had like two certain weapons and there's like one which you wouldn't usually use, if they attach a challenge to that, like say getting a certain amount of kills on this round with that gun, then I think that could work really well, both with the ranking and with a, like say if they had like a, a create your own a class gun kind of system, so you'd start off that round with that gun. That would be and very cool. And then have that through a leveling up system. That would be very cool. 
What about if they put vehicles online, like the jets and stuff like that? Or don't you reckon they do that? I reckon that would be going too close towards Battlefield 3 territory. I don't think they want to kind of do that, and especially with the uh, new Medal of Honor coming out, I wouldn't. Yeah. I would go close to that kind of territory. I don't know. I, I think. I think. <sighs> I don't think, I think there's definitely going to be more ground vehicles, obviously, I think. I think, is that a given? Is that just me? Because um, I, Well, from the trailer, what we've seen so far, it does look like they're going a lot more. Just like, I, stuff yeah. like, stuff the, like the RCXD, the that was kind of like their experiment in Black Ops. That was a player-controlled, small ground vehicle. And now, now they're going to have probably what looks like assault drones, those kind of a comparable um, thing to what's in Modern Warfare 3. They've got these yeah. quad pads. You know, I'm I'm thinking that we're gonna see stuff like that walking around. Well, I've, yeah, I've, there's a there's been a few things which I've seen on YouTube uh, we're considering multiplayer, and people are starting to get worried that it's going away from the actual gunplay and towards more of the point right. streaks, which is being kept. The point streaks is being kept from Modern Warfare Three, but people are getting concerned that it's going to be more towards the kill streaks and then less towards the actual between gunplay. Mm. But what I have actually mm -hmm. seen in the multiplayer, I've seen a few clips and stuff for it it's it's the complete opposite the gunplay is being focused on if anything too much uh, really? they've adapted yeah. they've yeah but they've adapted the point streak so much that it kind of compensates for it i think what a lot of people i don't think a lot of people noticed there was actually a multiplayer clip in the trailer yes and it was of the x47 pegasus yeah, uh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah which is which is the equivalent to a Reaper in uh, Modern Warfare Three, and it and it showed you guiding a missile down um, around a uh, wind turbine of some sorts um, to a very open area, yeah. and then a little flash on the bottom of the screen, and it said X forty seven Pegasus kill. Plus 50. Yeah, and then it gives a hundred. Yeah, plus fifty or plus a hundred points. Yeah, but um, if you have a look at that snippet of the thing of the actual picture, if you don't actually look at the kill streak, you can actually have a look at the size of the map. The map itself did look pretty sizable for a Call of Duty map. Yeah, I mean, it looked like a it looked like a battlefield map. Yeah, it's. It, I wouldn't mind if they had a few maps like that. It's just that I don't want every map being like that. I I would uh, like I would like a large variety. I think I think a map like Rust in Modern for in Modern for Two. It could just could just be something so stupid and fun that you know it it just got you out of your comfort zone sometimes. But sometimes you want you want to be able to plan your attack and have you know a strategic way to move around a really large map. Yeah, you know I think there's benefits to both. Yeah, um, I think that's one. Of the, I think that's one of the downsides with Modern Warfare Three at the moment. It's all the maps seem to have like one main circle and then like a center area. Yeah, and it yeah. most there's no like flanking the positions. Is it? Yeah, it, that's the thing which Battlefield Three gets pretty well. You've always got it's not it can't be circular. You always at one point get clustered into one point. Which some maps it's a good point, and some maps it's a bad point. But um, if, well, well if, I think with Black Ops they definitely need to make like some really big maps and then some like proper good small maps so, like one v ones and just general like mess about. Yeah. yeah, well, I think I think that's what Black Ops the first one did quite well, especially with maps like firing range and. I can't remember the mm -hmm. other one. Um, Newtown. Newtown they, those yeah. maps were great maps. I think those I think they know the, that too. I think that they. The, I mean, I think. Remember the Newtown twenty four seven playlist. I mean, they knew that people loved Newtown. Yes. They can't. They can't ignore that going into Black Ops two. Yeah. Well, well, are amazing with stuff like that, like the community based stuff. Um, moving away from multiplayer into campaign and single player, if you guys watched the interview with uh, Mr. Sark from Machine and Respawn, um. He talked to a uh, I I for, I don't know his position a head guy at Treyarch, and he's I think uh, he is the lead CEO of uh, Black Ops at the moment and Treyarch. Okay, and mm -hmm. uh, and they spoke about something totally new, which I I feel like it doesn't it's it's it doesn't have enough publicity right now, but it's this thing called Overwatch mode, and it it basically means that. It basically turns Call of Duty campaign into a much less scripted and linear uh, prog uh, process, and turns it into a more option-based system. They they talked about oh, yeah. they talked about completing a mission and then zooming out to like a battle plan and a map of like the world and and different hot zones, and you could choose which hot zone you wanted to go and fight in, and if you 
and if you died and lost, instead of, you know, restarting the mission, that was a part of the story. You you losing yeah. that battle was a part of the story, and it changed how the rest of the campaign went. I I think yeah, so that's a, that, yeah I, I think that's enough. a. Yeah, it's a it's a good idea. Just because there was a a statistic that I saw, it was about a month before Modern Warfare Three came out. It was eighty percent of players on any console who play a Call of Duty game, eighty percent do not play the main campaign, and I think something like that can get it back going again. Because it always used to be before the multiplayer side came in, it always used to be about. Oh, I want to play the campaign, see what it's going to be like. Because there was a point where I didn't have Xbox Live, I didn't have online or anything like that. It was always part of the main campaign. But uh, no, something like that could definitely freshen it up and make it a lot more understandable. I know to what play. they need to do. They need to put a co-op campaign in. That yeah, would they be, need to have that, that back. Amazing. They need to have that back from World of War. Yeah, that I think I think it's great that obviously at this point. It's clear that they're trying to innovate on the campaign side, which I think people are people are always complaining about the multiplayer. But something that hasn't changed in years and years and years, like one bit, is campaign and single player. Yeah, it's been it's the same been good, scripted I? linear. I think it's always been good as well. It, well, it's uh, been good, but it's been the same. It's been the same runabout. It's been the same. You know, mission to mission, you die, you start over at your last checkpoint. Yeah, well, yeah. The, the main thing was is with with the World at War campaign with COD Four and maybe Black Ops, just because it was a, a brand new storyline, nobody had really done it in the game before. Those three were great campaigns. They, I couldn't really fault them, especially uh, COD Four. But as soon as you got onto Modern Warfare Two and Modern Warfare Three, it's like Michael Bay from Transformers got hold of it and said, "Let's put a shitload of explosions and planes and shit into it." It just became too too Hollywood. It it was mm. too much. You can keep a game subtle like Black Ops did, and it'll still be an amazing game. But I think I think Call of Duty. I mean, they talk about this every year. You know, trying to create a really cinematic, exciting experience. But sometimes, it, well, with definitely with Modern Warfare two and three, they kind of did too much of that. But if they like toned it down a little bit and then had more story put into it, I think it would benefit from it. Because mm. because I think the Call of Duty community is kind of used to seeing too much, uh, too much at one time, especially like uh, with the campaign of Modern Warfare Two. Uh, I know for a fact in the UK, one of the newspapers wanted to have it banned because of the No Russian mission. Yeah, and I do understand Infinity Ward put in that you can skip the mission and you won't get penalized or anything for it, which I completely agree with. Yeah, because if you don't want to see something like that, you don't have to watch it. Right, but um. It's things like that. If they toned stuff like that down and then had like a uh, a more cinematic feel to it, because you don't want to be playing a game which is all explosions, all gunplay, everything like that. You don't want something like that and then ruining the rest mm -hmm. of the experience because it hypes the rest of it up and then you get a bit slower, long, uh, more down into the campaign and it's not as action and you kind of get bored with it. Right. Yeah. So I I think less less is more in in this kind of situation. What I think they should do as well is on like DLC and stuff. They should maybe like add guns or something. I don't know. That sounds a bit stupid, but give well, something they, like, new to the they game. Did it, they did it in Battlefield Three, and in Battlefield Three, it really did pay off. It didn't really falter the game at all. But the maps that they were releasing for it suited the guns that they were releasing. So it, it depends what guns they'd release into it and if it came with maps and extra modes and that kind of thing. Yeah. Because in like racing games and stuff, they add cars and tracks. They don't just add tracks, if you get what I mean. Yeah, with, with racing games, they add too many cars and too many tracks, especially with Forza. It's like one car pack yeah. like every week they re release, and it's, it's stupid. Yeah. But, uh, Mainly with the campaign, the one thing which I'm mainly like to see with the campaign is a, basically a longer campaign. I think the ones over the last Call of Duty have been too short. Right. I, I mean, the like Modern Warfare 3 campaign well. was something like, um, wasn't it like four hours or something? Yeah, it's four or five hours. It, it's a good campaign, but you, you want something more for the for the £45 that you're paying for a 
a triple A AAA title, you you want some more bang for your buck. It's it's not enough just yeah. for four or five hours. But then I suppose four or five hours, like on veteran, that's like four or five bloody day. <laughs> it, it, well, yeah, yeah, no, but I, I think I think I think they still need more timeline to work with. You know, like uh, I felt I felt like. Yeah. Well, for me, Mana for Two was was personally that was when I got into Call of Duty, and that was the golden age. And whenever you get into Call of Duty, I think that's your favorite game. And I and I like that campaign. When I came into Mono for Three, I felt like the campaign was just cut short. I just I, I felt like there should have been more content before the conclusion of such a story. Yes, I think especially. Oh, I'm not going to say any spoilers, otherwise it's going to pretty well have riots running around all over the place but especially with some of the more dramatic moments later on the campaign i think you did need a lot more backstory behind the characters because you must have a lot of people coming straight into modern warfare 3 without playing modern warfare 2 or 1 so they're not going to have the same impact so basically what you're wanting is some form of even if it was just backstory on the characters with like soap and price and um the new Russian guy on the team who was in the campaign, uh, some ba- more backstory on him. Yeah, I know they do it later on in the campaign, but more backstory on him would have been a- nice to see. What I uh, w- another thing about the campaign, what I what I hope <laughs> Treyarch doesn't do with Black Ops Two campaign is make it anything like the mind twisting campaign that Black Ops One was. <laughs> I didn't mind it, but it was too much Manchurian Candidate, and that it was Manchurian Candidate is a hard film to watch. There's points in Black Ops where I was playing it, and I was like, "What the hell is it going on that, about?" That, I, that point, that point where you're running through that hallway at the end, and the ceiling just blows off. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I've lost all respect for this campaign. <laughs> this has no credibility. Am I dreaming? I, I, I didn't even like. I don't know. Yeah, with uh, with Black Ops 2, though, the only link between the two games is Woods, who you thought died in Black Ops. Right. But um, if you don't know what the storyline for Black Ops 2 is yet, it's uh, the it's military... It's isn't on, it? Um, yeah, you play as Mason's son. Alex, from, I believe. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah Alex Mason. Uh, you play as his son from the first game. And what ends up happening is the military has gone really uh, mechanical. It's gone all robots, technology. And basically, technology is the new power. It's not money. It's technology. Right. And basically, what's happened is is the military servers for, I think it's for the US, have been hacked into and taken control of. Mm-hmm. And basically, their own military is now fighting against them. And I think the part that you see in the trailer where you're talking to Woods is how to uh, rekindle kind of what's going on, like how to do warfare back in the traditional way, where it's man-on-man, not robot-on-robot. Yeah, that's why like, all the horses come into it. Yeah. yeah, who doesn't want to have a campaign where you're riding a horse through I the think, desert? I, I, think, I think the haters that uh, are laughing at that moment, I think it's cool. I think it's funny. I, I'm looking forward to playing that mission. Uh, I, if, if, you get, if you can get that in multiplayer, I'll be happy. I'll, I'll be made up with that. Yeah. Because I, uh, I've seen a few things on a Call of Duty 2 multiplayer. It's it's hacked to hell, but one of the best mods I've seen for it is uh, it's this character. The top half of his body is a normal German soldier, and the bottom half is a horse. And uh, it's, 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 it's funny. Yeah. So basically, riding around on a horse, it, on, even if it's just on campaign, it is good. As long as it's not on rails, like what Battlefield 3 did in the jet mission. If it's not on rails, then I'll be happy. What do you mean by on rails? Um, with on Battlefield Three, um, it, it was it's like it was like time crisis. You be you didn't have any control of where you were flying. You just had oh. to point, point and shoot. But I see. If yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's not like that, then I'll be happy. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think we should wrap this up. I think we lost connection to Daniel somehow. Um, during the call so uh, uh thanks for listening guys and make sure to post your feedback and um your comments about black ops 2 um in the comments down below and we'll talk to you guys later thanks for listening